We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. Jesus never shied away from controversy. He took advantage of confrontational situations to expose hypocrisy and demonstrate his love, compassion, and mercy towards those who were suffering. He was particularly skillful at applying his wisdom to shut the mouths of his opponents who could offer no response to his devastating arguments, or irrefutable illustrations. This just intensified the opposition on the part of the proud, self-righteous religious leaders who were embarrassed by their inability to stand their ground with Jesus. They were always forced to retreat publicly and then regroup in private to try to come up with new ways to attack Jesus. When is it appropriate to show compassion and mercy towards those who are suffering? As Jesus had taught earlier in the parable of the Good Samaritan, it is always our responsibility to take action, when confronted personally with such suffering. Our first verse says, One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. We see Jesus once again invited for a formal meal in a Pharisee's home. In such cases, the host would invite friends, family, and people who would provide good conversation and increase his social standing. Other people from the area would be welcome to stand along the walls, and listen in. The host is a member of the sect of the Pharisees, and he is some kind of leader, he may oversee a synagogue, or work as a civil official or chief priest. Ever since Jesus exposed the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and their lawyers, they have been lying in wait for him, to catch him in something he might say. They were watching Jesus lurkingly. They were watching Jesus not out of reverence or respect. They want him dead, and they need hard proof that he commits a capital offense. Verse 2 says, There, in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. A man was among the crowd and is suffering aggravated edema. This involves extreme swelling and can be quite painful and debilitating. The man is not identified as a guest, he may be part of the crowd that has been following Jesus. On the other hand, he may have secretly been invited by the host to tempt Jesus into once again, healing on the Sabbath. The Mosaic law implies that this condition makes the person ceremonially unclean, when any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean. And this is the law of his uncleanness for a discharge, whether his body runs with his discharge, or his body is blocked up by his discharge, it is his uncleanness, Leviticus 15 2-3. Anything the man touches will be ritually unclean, Leviticus 15 4-12. Verse 3 says, Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Jesus livens up the ongoing conversation by asking a theological question. Rabbis, scribes, and other religious leaders love to debate the specifics, especially laws related to the definition of the work that the Mosaic law prohibited on the Sabbath. The scope of allowable medical care seems to have been a popular topic. After Jesus' time, rabbis eventually agreed that it is okay to treat a person to save a life, because a dead person cannot worship God. But it is not okay to deliberately treat a chronic, non-life-threatening condition. Dropsy, although painful and debilitating, is not immediately fatal. Jesus is asking the Pharisees to stop eating and think. Verse 4 says, But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Normally, Jesus' question would introduce a lively debate, but that's not the Pharisees' goal. All they need to do is remain silent and wait. Jesus will heal the man, and they will have more ammunition against him. The text says Jesus took hold of the man or touched him. Leviticus 15 3-12 seems to indicate that touching such a man, makes Jesus ceremonially unclean. It is not a sin to be unclean, but it is an odd choice to voluntarily become unclean, 
at another's house while preparing to lie on their couch and eat their food. It's interesting how Jesus protects the man by sending him away. He often protects those he heals by drawing them away from the crowd or telling them to keep their healing quiet. On the other hand, sometimes he draws attention to healing. Which he chooses depends on the situation and his goal. Verse 5 says, Then he asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? The leader and the other religious authorities refuse to answer Jesus' question on whether it is lawful to heal on the Sabbath. If they say no, they contradict the purpose of God's day of rest. If they say yes, they admit that their vendetta against Jesus is hypocritical. Yet Jesus asks if an animal falls into a pit on the Sabbath, is it okay to throw blankets and cushions into the pit, in hopes the animal can climb back out? Or does the fact that the blankets and cushions then become unusable for the Sabbath, break the law? The final answer seems to be that it is the rabbinical law, the oral law, that prohibits soiling the bedding, but the Mosaic law, which says not to let an animal suffer, supersedes the rabbinical law. Other discussions, especially in more modern times, affirm it is okay to save a life on the Sabbath. Our final verse says, and they had nothing to say. No answer emanated from the host and his party. Of course, Jesus heals the man and reveals their hypocrisy anyway, pointing out that if they would pull an ox or their son out of a well on the Sabbath, why shouldn't he heal a man? Now the Pharisees are silent for another reason. Jesus is right and they know it, they have nothing to say in their defense. After Jesus healed a man with a withered hand, Luke writes, but they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus, Luke 6:11. After Jesus heals an invalid on the Sabbath, John says, and this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath, John 5:16. Jesus silence critics. The Pharisees want to goad Jesus into breaking the law, badly enough that they can justify his death. So far, however, they've only managed to get him to break their rabbinical rules. Shortly before the crucifixion, they will try to get him to commit sedition against Caesar, Luke 20 19-26. In the end, they accuse Jesus of the spurious crimes of declaring himself king, Luke 23 1-5, a capital offense. Jesus Silence Critics 1. Jesus delighted in human society, Luke 14 1. He had a sociable temper, and grabbed every opportunity of conversing and doing good. He teaches us to love our enemies, and not to avoid conversing with them, that we may gain an opportunity of being reconciled to them. 2. Our Savior dined publicly at the Pharisee's house, among the lawyers and Pharisees on the Sabbath day, Luke 14 1. Our Lord's example in going to a public dinner among lawyers and Pharisees, shows the lawfulness of feasting on that day, provided we use the same moderation in eating and drinking that he did, and improve the opportunity as a season for doing good, as he has taught us by his example. 3. The Sabbath meal is invaded by a sick man who is hoping for healing, Luke 14 2. 